I'm Eric and you're watching Two Wheels Better. Today, we're going to be reviewing the Brooklyn Franklin City Bike. Now a fully equipped city bike can be an awesome tool for practical daily living, but the price can start to add up once you get all the bells and whistles. So if you're on a tight budget or you just don't need the bells and whistles, or perhaps you're just trying to figure out if this whole city cycling bike commuting, all, all that endeavor is for you then I, I would make the case that the Brooklyn Franklin is one of the absolute best deals out there. And frankly, even if you're not on a budget, it's still pretty fantastic. Actually, out of all of the bikes I have bought and sold and ridden for extended periods over the years, which have added up to a kind of ridiculous amount of money, the Franklin is the cheapest one I have ever bought, yet I've owned it the longest, still have it right here at home in fact, and ride it regularly. I'm going to talk about why that is and why it's so uniquely good in a sea of similarly priced competitors, so stay tuned. Most of the Brooklyn line sticks to the pretty timeless and low-key side of things aesthetically, and the Franklin definitely epitomizes that. So if you like the sporty kind of Formula One, you know, carbon fiber, disc brake look and wind tunnel aerodynamics, then you're really barking up the wrong tree with the Franklin or anything else from Brooklyn altogether. So we see an absolute classic city bike style here and wisely Brooklyn included matching fenders and a chain guard and a kickstand right out of the box. So the very most that you'll need to add to make this more useful is an inexpensive rack. I'd recommend buying it directly from Brooklyn just to make the fit as simple as possible, but I had no problem at all attaching my own rack, uh, which was just a generic Planet Bike model that I got for about $35. By the way, one quick note is that step-through frames, despite how they're typically marketed, are not just for women. They're obviously helpful if you're wearing a skirt or a dress, but they're useful for anybody. For one thing, if you have a large load or even a child on the rear rack, it's really nice to be able to step right through the frame rather than trying to swing a leg over and risk, you know, kicking your kid in the head or sending your groceries flying on the ground. Whether you're male or female, that's just a nice feature. Additionally, personally, I have a relatively short inseam for my height. So by the time I find a bike that is long enough for a proper riding position, I often end up with very little standover clearance. And when you have a step through frame, that's not an issue anymore. And that means too, that when you have to hop off unexpectedly, like you're coming to an emergency stop, for instance, you don't really need to worry about that. One minor uh, quibble with the design is that I just wish the front fender extended a little more fully to wrap around the rear wheel. It would be nice if it blocked more spray off of the road because that tends to be absolutely filthy. I added a DIY mud flap just made from some vinyl sheeting from the hardware store, but a longer fender out of the box would have been a nice touch. The Franklin's frame is made of steel, which is a standard and desirable material for city bikes in general because it has a more resilient and springy quality than aluminum. So all else being equal, you'll get a slightly smoother and more forgiving ride. To be clear, it doesn't mean that the frame's gonna double as a shock absorber, it just means a subtle smoothness and reduction in vibration that's kind of lacking from most aluminum frames. Now the Franklin has nice clean, smooth welds throughout and a solid paint job, which suggests that even though they're using pretty much the same Chinese and Taiwanese factories as everybody else, they are working with high quality ones that enforce very stringent production standards. By the way, one quick note is that the Brooklyn Franklin and Willow are geometrically the same bike. Parts-wise, they're mostly the same bike, but the Willow, for $100 more, gives you a double-butted double 4130 chromoly frame, which should save just a fraction of the pound, arguably improve the ride quality a little bit, but I haven't ridden them side to side to compare. That said, the Willow's only $100 more, and it includes a rack, which you'll probably need anyway. So unless your budget is painfully tight, then I would strongly consider going for the Willow. In any case, everything I'll describe in this review applies equally to both of them. So moving on to the specs, the smaller size Franklin uses 26 inch wheels, 
The larger size, which I'm reviewing, uses 700C, also known as 29 inch. Theoretically, the larger wheels should be just a bit smoother on rough ground, but the advantage of smaller wheels on a smaller frame is that everything remains proportional, so both sizes keep the same fantastic ride quality that I'm going to elaborate a lot more on in a little bit. You'll get 35mm tires on both, that's a perfectly fine width for all around city use. And while you would need some knobs on them for mud or for loose dirt, these basic Kenda Quest tires with a slick pattern have worked perfectly fine, even for a bit of dirt and gravel for me. And the rims are double walled aluminum, 32 spokes front and rear, and that's a good durable spec for utilitarian bikes. It's exactly what I would like to see, and fortunately it's exactly what Brooklyn included. Um, as with any wheels, you do want to make sure that they're completely true before you start riding and you want to have them trued on occasion just to keep them rolling smoothly and make them as durable as possible. I am a fan of the quill stem on this bike, which aesthetically is a bit of a retro feature, which kind of suits the bike overall, but it's also extremely practical because unlike with the more modern threadless stems, a quill stem gives you a huge range of height adjustment and all you have to do is take about 30 seconds to loosen that bolt in the top of the stem, raise or lower it, and then tighten it back into place. As for the drivetrain, you might have noticed I'm talking about the single speed version here, which they've unfortunately discontinued. So your drivetrain choices will be either a 7 speed derailleur or a 3 speed internally geared hub both at exactly the same price of $4.99. If you live in a very hilly area, the seven speed is probably the wiser choice, but if you're not in a hilly area, then I would go with the internally geared three speed just to keep maintenance to a bare minimum. As for brakes, you're gonna get uh, some long reach Tektro dual pivot calipers, which work well enough um, nothing wrong with the brakes in and of themselves. There's just a bit of an inherent limitation where when you have these fairly wide tires with fenders, the brakes need to have extremely long arms to accommodate all of that. That means that sometimes the, the long arms can allow for a little, a little more flex, which leads to a slightly weak or mushy feel even though overall braking power is totally adequate, I, I've, I've never had a problem stopping promptly. You just won't get quite the same bite that you do from some well-adjusted V brakes or good disc brakes. Then the last parts to cover are just the touch points of the saddle and grips and pedals, all of which are, you know, the standard, frankly, kind of cheap ones you'll find on pretty much every bike at a budget to mid-range price. I replaced the saddle with a Brooks B67, so that's why you see the leather saddle with springs there. And one of these days, I'm finally gonna remember to replace the grips with a pair of Ergon GC1 BioCourt grips, both of which are huge improvements over the stock vinyl covered stuff. Uh, the, the pedals are just your usual metal caged platforms that are perfectly serviceable, but uh, there's plenty of cheap alternatives if you find the feel of them isn't quite to your liking. So let's get on to the good part, which is why I think the Franklin is a bit more than the sum of its parts and such a marvelous ride and value all the way around. The, the short way to describe it is it's basically a budget Rivendell bicycle, and you're probably not familiar with Rivendell, I'm not sure, but they're a small kind of cult brand that is known for rather expensive bikes that absolutely ride like a dream. Their founder is a, a guy named Grant Peterson who actually collaborated on the design of the Franklin as well. So a lot of the features that make Rivendell's ride so uniquely well are also built into the Franklin and its companion Willow model. That means you have extra long chain stays, you have a tall head tube, a long effective top tube, and the head and seat tube angles are both right around 70 to 71 degrees. And you have a low bottom bracket, which keeps your center of gravity very low and stable, so it corners nicely, and it also reduces the overall height when you need to put a foot down at a stop. Now, I have owned two Rivendells personally, both phenomenal bikes, and I would say the Franklin is something like 
80% or 90% of that ride quality for maybe 15 to 25% of the price. Obviously at 500 bucks, Brooklyn isn't going to use all that artisanal flair that you would find on a Rivendell, like beautiful lug construction or super detailed paint jobs. But at, at the end of the day, no matter how much you like that stuff, it, isn't, it, it doesn't directly impact your ride. So price considered, the Franklin has, it, it avoids that kind of lazy, heavy plodding feel that a lot of comfort bikes and cruisers are prone to. It kind of feel like you're steering a boat down the street. It completely avoids that, but at the same time, it also avoids that twitchy or harsh feel that a lot of uh, hybrids and certainly road bikes are prone to. It, it's a bike that you cease to notice as you're riding around town. But my point is that the Franklin handles in a very neutral, stable, smooth, predictable way that doesn't draw attention to, and rather responds no more and no less than you want and simply lets you get on with your business and enjoy your ride. So my bottom line is that if you want a fairly classic city commuter all around sort of bike for paved terrain and an occasional gravel road, then for the money, the Brooklyn Franklin and Willow just can't be beat. It's a terrific cheap city bike to be sure, but I want to emphasize that I've kept it despite owning several really expensive bikes as well. It's honestly just that good. The only limitation is if you're on the taller side, like upwards of roughly 6'1 or 6'2, I don't think it'll be a great fit despite what they say on their sizing page. But for the rest of us, I can't think of a better value in a classic city bike, let alone one that rides so smoothly and predictably, but with just enough agility and responsiveness to be fun in its own right. That's hard to find, period, and for this price, I'm not aware of any other that quite delivers that. So that's made me a raving fan of this model, as you can tell, and I'm thrilled that Brooklyn still offers it. Hope you found this helpful, appreciate your watching, and remember to like or subscribe to stay tuned for more content around city bikes and the practical side of cycling. Take care.